Hello, this is Dr. A with a clinical chemistry review video on porphyrins. All right, porphyrins, hemoglobin, and myoglobin all contain a porphyrin ring. The porphyrin ring is made of four powerful groups bonded by methane bridges. This is a representation of a porphyrin ring. The porphyrins are helpful because it can chelate metals to form functional groups that participate in oxidative metabolism in um, heme, of course, and myoglobin, we're interested in it because it can bind iron here in the middle, and then oxygen can bind on the iron. The porphyrias are disorders that are associated with heme synthesis. Porphyrin, so then they're, so they're composed of four power rolls. So this is what a power ring looks like. Um, it's bound in a ring, and these power rings are bound in a ring shape here. Uh, that perform the porphyrin ring, and then the, they bind the iron molecule, which is going to be right here in the middle. The side chains of the molecules allow for the variability of all the porphyrins. The important ones um, that we need to know about are uroporphyrin, protoporphyrin, and coproporphyrin. In order to make heme, iron must be in a fair state and bind to bind in here. And oxygen binding is a process of an oxygen molecule binding to one heme group and it binds on the iron atom right there in the middle. So each heme group can bind one molecule of oxygen. And each hemoglobin molecule has four heme groups. Porphyrins are chemical intermediates in the synthesis of hemoglobin, myoglobin, and other respiratory pigments that are called cytochromes. Um, and they're using the energy uh, production, production of ATP and stuff. Most porphyrins in the human body exist as porphyrinogens. There are reduced compounds that are intermediates in the biosynthesis of heme. And heme is uh, the non-protein iron-containing prosthetic group of hemoglobin, uh, globin being the protein component of hemoglobin. Porphyrins are photoactive due to extensive conjugation of that tetrapower ring. They can absorb light in the 400 nanometer wavelength, which is in the purple uh, wavelength. And it will uh, emit then a characteristic orange-red fluorescence uh, that can be detected between 600 and 650 nanometers. So it's again orange-red in color. The property, this property will produce some of the manifestations of the diseases and provides a mean for detection of the compounds and body fluids tested in the laboratory. So you can make stuff glow basically in the lab. Um, all cell cells contain hemo hemoproteins, which is interesting, and can synthesize heme, but the primary sites are bone marrow and liver. The rate of heme synthesis in cells of the liver is achieved by the regulation of the enzyme delta aminoliverlinic acid or uh, synthase or delta ALA synthase. So um, if you have an increase in heme, so you have plenty of heme, then that would obviously decrease ALA synthase because you don't need to make any. And if you have a decrease in heme, it would cause an increase in ALA synthase because you need to produce more heme. The rate of heme synthesis is flexible and can change rapidly in response to many external stimuli, for example, blood loss. The porphyrias are a group of rare inherited or acquired metabolic disorders that are caused by an enzyme defect in the heme production pathway. Uh, the porphyrias can be grouped according to the clinical manifestation of the disease. So you have some that have neuropsychiatric symptoms some to have cutaneous symptoms, and some to have both neurocutaneous symptoms. Uh, the diagnosis is made by a combination of the history, the physical, and the laboratory findings. All right, the ones that are associated with the neuropsychiatric symptoms are um, ALA dehydratase deficiency porphyria, or ADP, and acute intermittent porphyria, or AIP. Uh, it is, is due to the accumulation of the early heme precursors, and the signs and symptoms are abdominal pain, nausea, constipation, hypertension, psychiatric symptoms, fever, and paresthesia, which is like uh, tingling and stuff in the um, hands and feet, maybe a burning sensation in the hands and feet. The types that are associated with, associated with the cutaneous symptoms are porphyria cutanea torda, hepatoerythropoietic porphyria, erythropoietic porphyria, and congenital erythropoietic porphyria. 
And these are due to the accumulation of some of the intermediate pain precursors, and the signs and symptoms are photosensitivity, so burning of sun exposed skin, blisters, excess facial hair, and hyperpigmentation. This is uh, often referred to as some of the vampire diseases because of that photosensitivity, uh, sensitivity to light. Could be werewolf too with the ex excess facial hair, but anyway. Uh, and then there are some that have neurocutaneous symptoms, so combination of both. Those are hereditary cool porphyria and very good porphyria. Um, and so the neurosymptoms are abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, tachycardia, hypertension, psychiatric symptoms, fever, and paresthesia. And the cutaneous symptoms are photosensitivity, blisters, excess facial hair, and hyperpigmentation. So this is a graph of the heme production pathway, starting here with that delta ALA syn synthetase and uh, this uh, delta aminolithylenic acid. And you can, so you can see here where we go uh, to PBG and then on to heme, and we can see where the different deficiencies are. So the missing enzyme in parentheses and the porphyria is here. Uh, we can see them here all over. And so that gives you an idea of the heme pathway and then where these various porphyrias come from. There are also secondary porphyrinurias. So that's an acquired condition that's associated with an increased excretion of urinary porphyrins. Uh, liver, liver disease and heavy metal poisoning can cause these excess urinary porphyrins to be excreted in the absence of a porphyria disease. Lead inhibits the enzymatic formation of PBG, increasing the concentration of um, aminolithylenic acid and coporphyrinogen oxidase function, and that causes corpro 3 to accumulate. The symptoms of lead intoxication are similar to those found in acute porphyrias. The um, acute porphyrias, which is our ADP, AIP, HCP, and VP, uh, you will see periodic neurovisceral attacks, psychiatric symptoms in red urine. The most common of the acute porphyrias is the acute intermittent porphyria. The chronic uh, porphyrias are CEP, PCT, EPP, and XLPP. They uh, show extreme sensitivity to the sun. The sun can blister, which causes infections and scarring and all of that. Uh, the patient could develop liver and nervous system disorders, and the porphyria cutanea tarda is the most well known. Again, the little vampire diseases. How we test for it? So we can uh, so testing for the porphyrin disorders. Uh, usually we do uh, testing for the precursor compounds, um, PBG, which is uh, porphyrinogen and um, ALA, which is delta aminolivalinic acid. And uh, we utilize iron exchange chromatography to uh, remove the interferences and isolate each compound. And then to test for the urinary PBG and ALA is the Watson-Schwartz test uh, method that uses Ehrlich's reagents. Um, and there's an absorbance maximum at approximately 555, which is in the green area, and a shoulder at 525, which is in the blue-green area. And the current assays will allow quantitative measurement of analyte concentrations. Um, other tests of porphyrins, there's uh, enhanced fluorescence of the compounds in an acidic solution, so you can measure for the fluorescence. Um, there's also chromatic separation and quantitation with uh, spectral photometry or fluorometry. And of course, the molecular diagnostic techniques to look for all the enzyme deficiencies since this is a genetic, often a genetic disease, so it can be inherited. So there's a problem in the genetic code, which then of course can be detected. Uh, the specimen requirements for testing, you absolutely must protect the uh, specimens from light. The porphyrins and the precursor compounds are stable in unpreserved urine at 4 degrees Celsius for up to 48 hours and can be frozen at negative 20 Celsius for several weeks, so either refrigerate it or freeze it. Uh, and then whole blood collected for protoporphyrin measurement should be anticoagulated with EDTA and stored in the dark at 4 Celsius, which is refrigerator temperature. And that is it for your porphyrias. Thank you.